Welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the Know with Juanita. We're glad that you're joining us again this week. We're always happy there are people like you out there, people that are interested in the issues that are happening in CCX's feeding area. It is important for good government that there be a good flow of information back and forth between the mayors, the city council people, the city staff, and you, the residents of our cities. So we're glad that you're interested. We are now into city election season. On November 6th, you'll be, if you're in one of the eight cities in CCX's viewing area with an election, you'll be voting for city councils and some mayors. The CCX cities that have elections on this November 6th are Brooklyn Park, Brooklyn Center, Crystal, Maple Grove, New Hope, Osseo, Robbinsdale. And we will encourage you as we go through a lot of candidates and let them a chance to tell you about themselves so it'll help you in determining who to vote for. We encourage you to take down their names and their emails and their phone numbers. And if you've got concerns, be in contact with them. Now, I'm very happy tonight to welcome a group of candidates from several of our cities to share their thoughts and their ideas with those of you out there. We have April Grace from Brooklyn Center. We have David Seffron from Crystal, and that was Ward 1, right? And Juliana Haltstrom from Osseo, and Terry Giafoni from Ward 2 in Plymouth. So we're very happy to have all of you with us tonight. And we'll hear from all of you, each one at a time. So we'll help the voters out there uh, kind of focus in on what's happening in your cities and what you want to see happen. We'll start out with April Graves. And I'll let you start a little bit. And you can introduce yourself out to our wider audience and tell them a little bit about you and your background and how that's prepared you to be on your city council. Um, my name is April Graves. I'm running for Brooklyn Center City Council. Uh, I grew up actually in St. Paul's uh, Rondo neighborhood. Uh -huh. um, I grew up there and spent a, a good portion of my life there. I bought a house in Brooklyn Center uh, about seven years ago. Uh -huh. I'll be celebrating the anniversary uh -huh. next month. Um, I decided to set down roots here with my family. I have four children. Uh -huh. My oldest is 22, my youngest is nine. Um, I actually was a teen mother and the uh -huh. first in my family to attend a four-year university. University. I um, uh -huh. got my bachelor's degree in social science uh -huh. and creative writing. And I've also worked for the last year at the Minneapolis Health Department uh -huh. in uh, adolescent health and youth development. So I do a lot of work around uh, teen dating violence prevention, violence prevention in that role. Uh -huh. I'm also a yoga instructor. Uh -huh. Um, and I enjoy writing poetry. I've been on the council in Brooklyn Center for the last four years. Right. And I think since I've been on the council, I've definitely elevated the conversation around racial and economic equity, uh -huh. um, investing more in youth programs, uh -huh. um, things like Brooklink, the summer uh, youth employment. Oh, right. And um, also talking to, about small business, uh, supporting our entrepreneurs, and really lifting up the diversity that uh -huh. makes our city a great place to live. Ah, oh, thank you. And then I asked you in advance to think of some issues that are important in this election cycle in Brooklyn Center. Um, what are some of the top oh, two or three issues that you're focusing on as you talk to people and getting information out to them? Or, or where you'd like to either say, everything's doing great, let's continue <laughs> it, or maybe we need changes? Well, I think you know the issues that I have been focusing on were definitely issues that needed to be addressed. Um, the small businesses, especially as we redevelop the city, uh -huh. it's important that we make space for people that don't have a lot of money to actually get a start and a foothold. Oh, right. So more recently, we actually have been offering some small business consultations. Uh -huh. um, we hired a small business manager. Uh -huh. Um, and we're just doing more work to support the residents and to uplift uh -huh. the people that live in the city. Um, I also think that the summer jobs program for youth has expanded um, while I've been on the council. I think it'd be great to see even more young people empl employed through that program or maybe even look into the idea of making it a year round and not oh. just a summer uh, opportunity. Um, one thing that I continue to work on and talk to uh, the council about is just recognizing the importance of equity in whatever decisions we're making. Uh. 
um, and making sure that we get a lot of community engagement and input in the decisions that affect the people that live there. Right. Um, and I think that we have made good strides in that direction. We've hired on um, a communications director. We are just now hiring on some more communication, uh, community engagement specialists and cultural uh -huh. liaisons through the Park and Rec Commission. So I really think moving forward, continuing to try to get all parts of our community engaged right. and to make sure that their input is included when we're making decisions so that we can create a city that really works for everyone. Right. Yeah. And do you have some other issues that you're focusing on? Um, I think that, you know, those issues kind of go across all fields, whether right. you're talking about uh, redevelopment or if you're talking about um, education uh -huh. or even just having access to healthy foods um, so, or green space to walk your kids in. Uh, how do we make a place that really feels welcoming to everybody and make sure that the opportunities that are available, people know about them? So that could mean um, you know, making sure that our communications go out in Hmong and go out in ah, Liberia. Right. So there's right. definitely still work to be done, um, but I think that we're making positive steps in the right direction. Yeah, you have one of the more diverse neighborhoods around, right? It's actually the most diverse city yep. in the state. Right. Yes. Yeah. And doing a lot of work with that, too. Exactly. I think, you know, when I first ran on the council, ran for city council, when I got elected, I was the first woman of color ever elected uh -huh. to the council. And since I've been on the council, I've seen a lot younger and more diverse candidates uh, stepping up to run. And I also think there's been a bit of an increase in just the level of engagement because the city is seeking to get more of our population right. engaged. It's important to keep the people that have been apart apart, but also to make room for new people to uh, become part of that process. And then why should people from Brooklyn Center, when they go into that election booth, why should they check your name under Brooklyn Center? Well, I think that they should because I'm an honest person. Um, I speak from the heart. I think I'm very accessible. You uh -huh. find me out in the community. I'm connected to people also in Brooklyn Park and in North Minneapolis. Huh? So. Um, and soon too probably from other cities that neighbor us right. uh, to make sure that we can work collaboratively because the issues that we face are not just they don't recognize jurisdictional boundaries oh, right, right. Um, and our the people that live in our cities cross those paths mm -hmm. and those boundaries every day so to really be effective we have to both engage the community but also work across those in, invisible lines right yeah. thank you yeah. and now we'll move on to David Seffron and I'll let you start out by introducing yourself. And well, thank you, Anita. <clears throat> uh, I've been a 29-year resident of ah. Crystal in the Bassett Creek neighborhood. Live there with my wife, Sherry, and two boys, Michael and Max, and huh. Suki the Wonder Dog. <laughs> uh, I've been in information technology for 22 years ah. uh, with a national dental laboratory ah. company, and I had my own uh, IT consulting company ah. before that. Uh, started thinking about running for office maybe four to five years ago okay. um, when this seat became open in Crystal mm -hmm. uh, some friends and uh, and uh, uh, neighbors encouraged me to go for it uh -huh. throw your hat in the ring because I was always interested in politics oh, right. and watching what was going on and at all levels of government uh, my first involvement with city with the city was uh, with the Crystal uh, code review task force ah. where we went through the city code book uh, page by page over a 16 month uh, period and recommending uh, simplifications, uh, get rid of old outdated sure. uh, uh, regulations. Uh, just try to make the uh, code book more uh, user friendly right. and uh, understandable by the average person and, and uh, businesses as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you shouldn't have to hire a lawyer to do business <laughs> with the city. Right. Um, that experience kind of let me look at the city and, and the city government from the inside out. Oh, sure. I mean, all the machinations yeah. of, of, uh, of the city and the regulations. Um, we made hundreds of recommendations to the city council, and they've been plowing through those over, since the task force uh, ended its right. work. And uh, they're getting close to the end. Uh, I was at a city council meeting last night, and they're working on Chapter 10 uh -huh. now. There's three or four more to go. Um, and we worked with a great group of engaged, uh, dedicated citizens, and that was the the most rewarding thing for me. Oh, that right. I think when citizens are involved in uh, in government, it's just better for everybody. Um, I also was uh, took the Crystal um, Citizens Police Academy, oh, right. and that opened my eyes to um, 
a lot of the what what our officers are faced with on a right. daily basis. Uh, most people don't understand the full scope of their job. Oh, right. And I walked away with a, a new uh, respect and appreciation and uh, for their dedication and professionalism. And what issues are you focusing on as you're talking to people? Uh, I'm focusing on three things in my campaign. Uh, the first is responsible spending. And um, I will watch spending like a hawk and uh, also um, try to keep taxes in check. Uh, the balance between those things is important to have uh, a fiscally uh, stable future. Right. Um, the city has uh, been working on a longer term budget now. So instead of budgeting for one year cycle, they're on a two year cycle now. Oh. This is the first, the first uh, budget that they've come out that, with that was a two year budget. Um, they've got a long range parks plan in place for uh, maintaining and uh, renovating our park system. And uh, also our water and sewer system is ah. going to need uh, extensive work over the next decade. Um, two thirds of the this, of this system is uh, almost end of life. Right, right. So there's a lot of financial planning and budgeting that will have to be done uh, along those lines and capital expenditures and so forth. Um, I believe in uh, uh, a healthy bit of rainy day, uh, safe for a rainy day ah. uh, budgeting. So when we know that we're going to have uh, pothole streets, we know that water mains are going to break, right. and we need to plan for that. And and I think that we're with fund accounting, we're we're getting that under control right now. Um, we can't always assess residents for uh, street repairs. Um, I think like when you pay your taxes every year, a little bit should go away, wow. so that when the street needs to be repaired, the money is there. Right. And uh, also, I, I I'm on the lookout for duplicative services. Um, why should Crystal pay for um, services that are uh, offered by Hennepin County oh. or the state? Right. Um, and and the balance there, balance between taxes and spending, is the operative um, component of responsible spending. And then, why should people from Crystal vote for you come November sixth? Oh, I didn't get my other two issues. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I uh, this is my first time running for office, so uh -huh. I'm kind of a newbie. But uh, I, the, my experience on the Crystal Code Review Task Force um, really made me see how citizen involvement is ultimately important. Oh, yes. And when citizens are um, involved on commissions, and right now in Crystal we have some openings on commissions mm -hmm. and some committees, um, when citizens are involved, the citizens are, are driving the discussion and not the city staff or right. the bureaucrats. Um, so I, I would love uh, the support of my friends and neighbors. Uh -huh. I'm not, it's a nonpartisan election. I'm not representing any party. Right. Um, the only endorsement that is important to me is from my friends and neighbors. And I will represent, be open and, uh, open and accessible to my uh, constituents and uh, listen to all sides of an issue. And I'm pretty analytical and data driven and I will put a lot of study into things before I make a decision. Okay, thank so, you. Thank you. Now we'll move on to Juliana Holtstrom, Osseo, and we'll let you start out with giving us a little bit about your background and a little bit about you and your city and why you think that melds together for being a city council person. Thank you, Anita. I'm Juliana Holtstrom, and I moved to Osseo about four years ago. I became active right away in my first year there. I accepted a public safety commission. And the second year there, I accepted a commission for Northwest Hennepin County Human Services Council, oh, Advisory yeah. Council. And I worked with that entity until they closed in May of 17. I also accepted a commission on comp planning. Oh. And then I accepted most recently a commission on the EDA in the beginning of 17. Since then, I have been elected president of the EDA in Osseo. And I've worked hard through these commissions to understand the city and all aspects of wow. it in different views and different um, commissions to see how they all work together and how they all come together. Right. To make the city really what it is. Um, some of what makes me um, very interested in running in Osseo is because Osseo is small and it's quaint. It's a walkable city. Right. It's a healthy city. And I'd like to see that we are able to keep our residents 
be resilient, keep our infrastructure in top shape. Um, we've started a roads, alleys, and curb plan. I'd like to continue on that as the present council is. And I, I believe that Osseo has a uniqueness again in its size. We have six TIF districts, mm -hmm. which um, our neighbors to the north, Champlin, have two. Our neighbors to the west, Maple Grove, only have two. And each one of those cities, both of the two, each one of them have one that is completed already, uh -huh. where we have six active. Uh -huh. So it's a lot to learn. Um, many times people don't understand what TIF oh, stands definitely, for definitely. and how the terms can be very, very different in TIF. And it's been something that unfortunately, but fortunately, Osseo has used oh, right. to attract right. development in such a small area. We're three quarters of a mile square ah. and we have three cemeteries, three churches, a Hennepin County Service Center, and a library. We have some, um, probably about 50% of our property is non-tax ah, generated makes a big property. Right. Yes. Now, are there any other issues that you're focusing on as you walk, do some door knocking and talk with people in your city? I'm listening to what their concerns okay. are. I'm listening to um, some of the problems that we've had in the past. And I've taken on myself to become active in affordable housing. Oh, yes. Osseo is a great area that's full of NOAA rich, naturally occurring affordable housing, um, is the acronym for NOAA. Right. And it, we're rich in NOAA housing. We have older multifamily living houses, oh, right. plus of our single family homes, many of them are rental. So I'd like to see that Osseo protects the affordable housing that they have. I'd like to see that if there's redevelopment, that there's affordable housing aspect to the redevelopment. And then to finish off, why should people in Osseo vote for you come November 6th? I feel that I've become seasoned in different areas by the different commissions. And I feel that I can add one commodity that is fastly um, leaving the average person, and that is time. I'm ah, retired, right, so I right. have time, and right. that is a good commodity right. to match with City Council. Thank you very much. Now we'll move on to Terry Giffoni from Plymouth, and we'll let you introduce yourself to our wider audience out there, especially the people in Plymouth Ward 2. Yeah, well, Plymouth is watching, and I want to thank you, Anita, uh -huh. for making this opportunity yeah. for all of us. Um, my name is Terry Giffoni and I'm running to represent Ward 2 in Plymouth. Um, Plymouth is a very large city. It's uh, pushing 80,000 people. Ah. We've grown tremendously in the last, uh, oh, since 2008, I think we've got 5,000 new residents. So I'll speak to some of those challenges a little later. But as far as my background, I actually uh, grew up in Hempstead, uh, oh. New York, and I was uh, raised by uh, to uh, parents who are wonderful and uh, instilled in me uh, an appreciation for public service uh -huh. on my dad's side and also uh, my mom instilled in me just values of uh, hard work and uh, perseverance uh, right. to get what you uh, to get to the goal you would like to achieve so i thank them for that i went to the university of connecticut uh, and i uh, got a bachelor's degree in biology and then i went on to get my master's in business administration uh -huh. from northeastern university in boston and uh, following that uh, i uh, worked for a large refining company independent uh -huh. refiner i spent a total of 25 years in the energy industry uh, eight years working for a refining company and then the last 15 working for Cargill here ah. in the Twin Cities. 
I um, managed for Cargill their biofuels of business. I helped them start uh -huh. that up, $150 million business, uh -huh. had to balance budgets, hire and manage a large workforce. And I think that gave me a lot of good skills uh, that I can transfer to the city council. Um, I have served on the uh, Planning Commission for three years in the city and also the Environmental Quality Commission for six years and also served as an election judge, mm -hmm. worked on several uh, political campaigns over the years. I also ran for city council in 2010. Oh. I ran against a very well-qualified incumbent and uh, I didn't do too badly, but I, I figured I'd give it another shot this sure. year when the opportunity in, in the Ward 2 opened up. And then um, what issues do you see coming up this election cycle in Plymouth? What are you focusing on as you talk to people? Well, getting back to that growth spurt that uh -huh. we've seen over the past several years, um, uh, we're having a little bit of a challenge. Plymouth, first of all, the city council have been great stewards of our mm -hmm. uh, uh, finances in the right. city. We have a triple-A bond rating and uh, that that has been, uh, they just have a tr great track record over many, many years in that area. When the economy was really tough in 2009, right. 2010, uh, they worked to, um, you know, trim back the budget, keep property taxes low and keep things moving forward for the citizenry. Um, now that things are improving a little bit uh, and we've built up the Northwest Quadrant oh, of the right. city, we're approaching full build out actually, right. which is very exciting. But um, now we're finding that some of our, uh, we're trying to balance the need for additional services, which, you know, managing uh, and being right. prudent about the, the financial side of things and keeping taxes low. So that's a big challenge for us. Oh, and I was right. glad to see the, the city last week actually voted to uh, increase the budget by, I think it was around 4.9%. Wow. They're going to be adding six more firefighters to the fire department and four more into the public works area. So that will improve services quite a bit for those new residents. Oh, right. So that was uh, good. The other thing uh, is I think we need to do more in the area of citizen involvement. Wow. Uh, I'd like to see two uh, commissions reinstated. One is the Human Services Commission and the other one is the um, uh, Transit Commission, um, which have been disbanded in recent years. And then I also would like to see our citizen com committees um, or elevated to uh, commission status, which uh -huh. is what they were, and then that uh, uh, title, if you will, was changed. Right. The third thing I'd like to see is Plymouth uh, be a welcoming community for everyone. We had a, an Islamic community center built oh, uh, right. or uh, created right across the street from City Hall. There were a lot of um, differing points of view and reactions to that development. I thought the council could have set the tone and come out more strongly in favor of, of welcoming uh, that community center to the city. So. Um, those are the things maybe right now that I ones, see right. uh, are important issues. And then maybe we could focus out to people in Ward 2. Why should they vote for you come November 6th election day? Well, you know, in our current political climate that we're in, I, I see it, a lot of people are in their corners and they're talking past each other. They're not really listening to each oh, other. Yeah. I am friendly with many members of the city council and we come from different political oh, sure. uh, points of view and I try to be respectful and try to listen and sometimes I even change my mind uh -huh. and that's not a bad thing. Right. So uh, I think um, if residents of Ward 2 will have the confidence in me, I will listen to their concerns, I will keep an open mind, I will work harder uh, than anybody to uh, do the research. I'm a bit of a research nerd, right. so I will um, you know, research the issues and uh, go out to see sites if I have to see sites and um, you know, uh, problem solve to uh, best represent the, the, the citizens in that ward. And I, I will also uh, be transparent and I will be accessible and um, you know, I hope they uh, will, uh, I hope I can earn their vote. Right on November 6th. Thank you. Well, I want to thank all of you for taking the time to share your thoughts and ideas with our audience out there. And we'll encourage those of you to tune in next week. We'll have a different group of candidates because we'll be concentrating on candidates all the way up through election time. And we'll, so we'll encourage you 
if you've got concerns or you have areas that are particularly important with you, be in contact with the people that are running in your city council elections. Take time to talk to them or email them with information. And we encourage you to gather a lot of information so you'll be prepared to vote, especially in the city elections. We look forward to your joining us again next week. Bye. The CCX cities that have elections on this November 6th are Brooklyn Park, Brooklyn Center, Crystal, Maple Grove, New Hope, Osseo, Robbinsdale. Now you can check your city's websites to learn about this year's candidates. That's one source of information. Our city's governments need your involvement. The eight cities that I mentioned all have either city council members up for re-election or election and mayors up for re-election and election. So we want to be sure that you vote on November 6th or you can also take part in early voting for your city council candidates. Now there are lots of places that you can go to find information on candidates. One of the places that you can go is the Minnesota Secretary of State's website and then go look under elections. There are, there's a lot of information there. You can check if you are registered to vote. If you're not registered to vote, you can register online. You can register in your city halls or in county offices. You can also see who's on your ballot in all of the different races. So there's a lot of information available for you at the Secretary of State site. And after the elections are done, you can find out vote totals to see who won. Now you can go to hometownsource.com and select your city then your local Sun, pay, Sun Post newspaper has information on the local candidates. They'll have information about their background. They'll have information about important issues. You can also get some information the, from the Star Tribune. Go into their website and select candidates from your city. Another important source of information is the League of Women Voters. They have candidate meetings or debates in all of our cities. So check when that meeting is going to be or check when it's going to be replayed so that you'd be able to get some information directly comparing people that are vote running against each other. You can also contact the candidates themselves or maybe they'll knock on your door. But you can contact them and let them know what your concerns are and give them ideas. They're always happy to be in touch with voters. So we want to make sure that you're an informed voter. Take the time to find out a little information to decide which candidates in your city you want to vote for and then be sure to vote on November 6th in your city election. Thank you.